Our last thing to learn for today is how to do something called an orbital diagram. This is kind of a picture format of an electron configuration. So we're going to learn one more rule and then apply that rule to these orbital diagrams. So the orbital diagrams in this Hund's rule, what does Hund's rule say? That um, if given an option, electrons prefer to be unpaired. Now, obviously, electrons don't have emotions. They can't prefer something. Um, but the electrons are going to, if given a choice, if there's multiple orbitals available to it, it's going to go into an open, empty orbital first before it pairs up with another electron. And then you can see off to the right-hand side of your screen here that I have this picture of a bus. So the reason I gave this picture of a bus to you is I want you to picture, let's say you're um, going to school in the morning and you have to ride the bus. And you are, um, you're near the end of the bus line. So when you get onto the bus, the bus is already pretty full. Now, I want you to also picture in your head the person that you cannot stand the most in this world, okay? And don't be picturing your lab partner right now, all right? But picture someone that, oh my gosh, just makes your blood boil. You cannot stand this person. Now, let's say that that person is on your bus, and when you get on the bus, the, you have a choice, you could sit in a seat by yourself or you could sit with your arch nemesis. Well, of course you're going to sit in the empty seat, right? Why on earth would you sit with your, this person that makes you your blood boil if you have the option of sitting somewhere else? right? That's what Hund's rule is saying. Electrons don't like one another. They're all negatively charged, so they repel one another. If there's a place where it can go or it's not forced to be paired up with another electron, then it's going to take that route. Now, what if you get on the bus and the only seat available is with your arch nemesis? Well, you probably don't want to sit with them, but you're kind of forced to sit with them because the bus driver's yelling at you to sit down and right, and maybe you're like, forget it, I'll get out and walk. Well, electrons can't get out and walk, right? So they'll they'll pair up if they have to, but they don't prefer it. So what we're gonna do is you'll see down below all these boxes. Each box in an orbital diagram represents an orbital. In other words, each one represents S clouds, P clouds, D clouds, F clouds. And then we're going to draw arrows in those boxes. And each arrow that we draw is going to represent an electron. So it asks us to draw an orbital diagram and a shortcut orbital diagram for nitrogen. So orbital diagrams are just a picture form of an electron configuration. So we figured out before that nitrogen's electron configuration was 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Its shortcut electron configuration was helium, 2s2, 2p3. We're going to have each box represent an orbital. So I'm going to have this first box represent the 1s orbital. And then I'm going to label it just so we know which one's which. So we can see from our electron configuration here 
that there are two electrons in the 1s orbital. So here's what happens. The first little electron gets on the bus and says, yay, there's an empty seat available. So I'm going to sit there in the empty seat. Well, then the second little electron gets on the bus and says, oh no, there's no empty seats, right? 1s2, two electrons are being asked to go into that orbital, into that box. So the second electron says, fine, if I have to sit with my arch nemesis, I'm at least gonna turn my back on him. And so I'm gonna draw the next arrow pointing down. What that's supposed to represent, if you bring two electrons next to one another and the first electron is spinning clockwise, the second one will spin counterclockwise to avoid it. So that's what the up arrow and the down arrow are supposed to represent. So that was our first little chunk of our electron configuration was the 1s2. We're done with the 1s2 section of our electron configuration. So I'm going to scribble in this next little box, just kind of color that one in. And that's supposed to represent that we're now moving up a little bit in energy. So our next section of our electron configuration is the 2s2 thing. Well, when we were learning about orbitals, if I scroll back and look at our orbital pictures, I want you to just remember that we said that, there's our pictures, there's one different orientation of S-shaped clouds, right? They look like this one orientation for S's, there's three for P's, there's five for D's, and there were seven for F's. So I want you to keep that one, three, five, seven idea in the back of your mind. So when we draw our S clouds, there's only one way to draw an S cloud, right? So this, we're gonna give it one box. That next box represents the two S. And our electron configuration says there's two electrons that are going into that two S cloud. So the first little electron gets on the bus, empty seat, second one's forced to pair up. We're done with the 2S section. The next section of our electron configuration that we're going to focus on is the 2P3. Remember a second ago I said there's one way to draw an S, three ways to draw a P, five ways to draw a D, and seven ways to draw an F? Well, if there's three different P-shaped clouds, the next three boxes, I'm going to label as two P's. The first box represents the P cloud that kind of looks like a number eight. The second box represents the P cloud that looks like an, an infinity sign, kind of an eight tipped over on its side. And then the third box represents the P cloud that's sticking out of your iPad screen at you. So 2P3, we need to put three electrons into those boxes. So the first little electron gets on the bus and says, yay, empty seat. The second one says, yay, empty seat. And the third one says, yay, empty seat. They all spread out. Why would those electrons sit with one another if they don't have to? They're gonna spread out if given an option they spread out. The 1s and 2s electrons were not given an option, but the there was only one seat available, right? But for our p clouds, there were three options available, and so those three electrons spread out. I'm going to color in that little box at the end just to kind of indicate 
I'm done, it makes it a little easier on your eyes so you can see where those P clouds end. And we would say that's the orbital diameter.